I think I liked it right away. Uh, somebody would have put a guitar in my hands and maybe I, wouldn't, I, I would have felt strange. How can I relate to this thing? But to do a tendu and a plié in a dance class, it was totally relating to me. Um, I was relating to, to this, I mean. Uh, it, it was working on myself, like, and that's what you want when you're 15, to, to find out about yourself. And suddenly a, a ballet exercise seemed totally perfect for me. And I'm, I think about it now and I'm surprised. It could have, I could have thought, what's this? Why do I do a plié and a tendu? But I enjoyed this right away. And then I went to CJ and I mentioned to someone that uh, she asked me, what were you doing besides school? I said, well, I was doing a little bit of dance. And she said, oh, there's a dance troupe here at Bois de Boulogne in Cégep in Montreal, and you should join. And I went, and there was a teacher that had done ballet with Les Grands Ballets, and also she had been dancing with the group Nouvelle Air. Her name was Louise Boudreau, and she pushed me right away to the group Nouvelle Air to take classes because she saw I loved it, wanted more. I, I asked questions, what's this kind of dance? And I really like it. I just saw their works, and... I really loved it. At the beginning, I, I loved everything. There were different choreographers. She would choreograph. And I, um, Paul Lapointe, uh, I think, where did he come from? He was, I don't know, what's his background? But he did great choreographies. And then Edward Locke did choreographies, Paul Henri Fortier, uh, Hero Tembeck. So uh, at the beginning, uh, I, s I loved everything. And then my taste became more precise. What was beautiful, it was open, because she let other people choreograph. It was just not only one vision, so maybe it allowed me to grow fast in this, you know, it didn't confine me but opened me to many different visions of people that were all interesting. But soon enough I had to leave because I wanted to, to explore something else. I thought I've learned what these people do and I, I could learn all my life in this place. I could stay there forever, it would be okay, but there's something that's not quite satisfying for me because I need to find my own thing. Right after I left, I asked a grant to go study in New York, and I, I got that grant. Uh, and Edward Locke for me to participate in one of his choreographies, uh, Oranges. So uh, I, this I was very, very happy about, but very insecure with this, because I really loved his work, didn't think I could fit in. But finally, I didn't fit in so well right away, but I did fit in at some point. I think I really did. So I continued working with Edward because he proposed me to do another work with him, businessman, in the process of becoming an angel. And then on and on and on, it kept going. I didn't know so well right away, but I thought, I don't care if I don't dance with these people, I will be around them, because that stimulates me. Uh, it's, I feel very alive, and that's where I should be. And physically, uh, I didn't make the link about, uh, with how I was improvising by myself and the work Edward was making. But when I made that link, not mentally, but physically, when I made the link, then it went really, really well with Edward. I was uh, very intrigued with this for many years. How does he do it? So that's why I thought, I cannot choreograph, because it's mysterious how he makes it. I couldn't learn from how he was making it. Anyway, I thought that. Because he was coming in and he seemed to invent on the moment the choreography. Uh, he didn't plan it, it seemed that he didn't plan it in his head before coming in the studio. But he would start improvise short, short, short sequences and very close to his body, not movement that would spread away or travel in the space, very minimal, minimalistic in a way, but complex, because uh, he was very fluid. Uh, so uh, we had to, uh, well, me, I don't know the others how they work, but I had to analyze everything. So in the be at the beginning it was very difficult because I thought his head moved a little bit there, his body went a bit this side, and there was this at the same time, and the hand went there, and there was some kind of weird movement with the leg. So I was trying to compute, to be, to compute all these things together, so it made me a little bit stiff. 
because it's, it did, I didn't trust to just throw myself into the movement. But he, he was smart because he used that. And I was moving different from the others at the beginning with Miriam and Louis. I was a bit more awkward and dry and funny or weird. But gradually I, I saw how the movement on his body transferred on Miriam's, on the others. And, and when I started to dance with Miriam, dance with the others, uh, I, it just sinked, sank in me. And, and then, uh, yeah, then it was easier. But still, Edward came in making movement all the time. The big jumps and all that made the company kind of famous for a while. Uh, this, he never, I, I don't re remind, recall him being, coming in soon and saying, well, now we're going to do a big jump and it's going to be a big surprise. One time with Claude Godin, Edward was telling me, like, maybe you can start from this part of the studio and you would go there and you go towards each other and at some point, Louise, you will turn in the air and he will catch you. But I, I went, I was so trusting and confident. I went and I loved my partner, Claude. We had good relation together. So I threw myself in the air and Claude caught me last second. But Edward didn't go like, wow, wow, wow. But after he said, well, yeah, well, we're going to do more of those. <laughs> we're going to do this more and more in the choreography because he really liked it. Because of this risk, we had to be totally present. We could not be in the parade, like parading how good we are. That couldn't be. We're just as good as you catch your partner this time, you're as good as that. Not only the risk level was not only in the catching a partner, it was in the movement. Because it was difficult uh, for the stamina, it was really demanding, uh, extremely tiring. And each night we would wonder, can we do it? But So we, had, we were just as good as the, the rehearsal we just did or the show we just did. And the next day was all to be redone again. I thought that I should leave since a while, because the company was getting bigger, because I didn't have the same uh, bond with all the new uh, people in the company. It was becoming a ballet company, and it was a bunch of people invading me in a way, because we were just three or four, before five, six, and then everyone was gone except one guy and me, and then this bunch of new people coming in, and I admire what they were doing, and I loved it. But they came with a set of rules almost also, and it's the ballet world, and the ballet world is full of rules. And even if they felt freer, because they were out of the context of big ballet companies, they still brought with them something of this world. And it was quite okay. But for me, I thought, I'm just an outsider in the group. And it was not with a bad feeling that I was noticing this. It was just an observation. And I thought, I don't want to be here anymore. I love the work. That was my reason to stay. I still love the work. Uh, I loved watching Edward creating on the new dancers, and I still loved what he was making for me. So that, that's the only thing that was difficult, was to leave this. But I left after six months of, tours, of touring of a uh, show called Two, no, Salt. So at least the, the dances that I had, I had a chance to taste them, and I wanted something else to happen. And to say yes to something else in your life, you have to say no to some other thing. So I was like, okay, this, I must leave. So Edward was not so happy that I was leaving, so it was not making it easier. But the day I left in Portugal, uh, for a moment, uh, I mean, a few minutes, I was sad. And after, I was not jumping in the air while I'm free, because I was already free when I was there. But I thought, okay, something else will start. When Ted Robinson phoned me, for example, he said to me he wanted to do a little project with me, another woman. I was not so sure what he was saying, but I thought, I like his voice. I thought, oh, I like him, how he presents the thing, he's interesting. And as I just said, I don't want to do the La 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 style, so I, was, I wanted to make sure nobody would ask me to copy Edward's work and bring it in their work. He said, no, 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 I don't want this at all. So I said, okay, let's start. And I met him like I met Edward, simply, and 
say hello, and then we try something. And I, he really made me laugh. I thought he was very intelligent. He was very deep and spiritual almost. I could feel all of this without putting all these words necessarily right away. And, so, and especially, I liked how he moved. So I took the same pattern. Like, I love how he works. I want to copy this. I want to imitate where does it start the movement. It starts from a different place. And I was very curious about it and dedicated. And he was, I think, a bit surprised by that because normally it doesn't really work this way. I think he makes dancers improvise a little bit. And he works with that, with ideas that they work on. But with me, he saw, oh, she's dedicated to copy me. So he went on and on and on to make a long choreography that was uh, very nervous, very much his style, but rarely moves for a long section like this. Uh, so me, I, I learned the steps and I really loved it. So I thought it's better I ask different people to work with me so that there's not the pressure on one person to make a big, big show, because people are going to expect the same now. Oh, we want a big show. And maybe that's not what has to be done. Maybe that's not the next step. So I, that's how I found uh, Crystal Pite and Benoit Lachon. And Crystal, she started to send me into improvisation. And with Benoit, I knew he was not going to give me any step. Or that's what I heard of him and that's how I perceived him. So I thought, better go back to improvisation. And then I realized, okay, maybe there's something wrong with asking always people to give me steps. Because maybe I, I make them. <laughs> and I must follow my own path. The beauty of having to do everything is everything you have control on. Not control to, not because I'm a freak control, because I like things to be done to the the best they can be done, the best that I can do it. Not to say it's excellent, but it's just has to be to the furthest I can bring the dance, I can bring the pictures, I can bring everything, uh, the, the text, the, how we pay people, how we don't lose money, how we don't spend it stupidly. How, everything, I have more an eye on it. Not that I control everything, but I know who's doing it and how it is, and it's, it's fluid and and so, so I really like this now. So now I'm going to another phase where I'm starting to spend time in the studio creating and I, I discover little sections that I like and it's different. Uh, okay, so, so it's me just growing in a way. It's just uh, being able to grow into a, a, a thing that's called dance for me. And it's still... Uh, uh, gives me a lot. So I, I will go on until I feel like, okay, I should stop, but I don't know why now I would stop. 